So hello again. Today I'd like to talk about bipolar junction transistors used as switches and amplifiers. So let's start with switches. If we take a bipolar junction transistor, let's put it looking like an NPN here, grounded emitter. What we're going to do is we're going to take our signal out from the collector and we're going to put our signal in on the base. This can be turned on fully or turned off completely in order to act as a switch, in order to give us a high or a low signal, a one or a zero, a true have you or false. Okay. Also used in digital circuits so let's see what happens when we try and use it as this type of a switch. Let's put an ammeter in our circuit here, our switch circuit. And let's measure all of this with a voltmeter. Now, in this case here, if I have the input signal at zero, then that's the same because I don't have, as you recall, this 0.7 volt drop. Because I'm not turning this transistor on, that's the same as the switch being open. If this switch is open, no current can flow. However, the pressure I feel at this point here, across the collector emitter, will be equal to the voltage I have up there. And when I turn this transistor on by putting a signal in there, by putting a voltage greater than 0.7, in this case here, then my switch configuration looks like this. And what I see with the switch closed, that is to say with the transformer so a transistor turned on is a short circuit, so zero, no pressure here, and this will have some value of current in the collector. So this is collector current through here, as we've shown before, right? You'll see the current flowing. You'll get a reading. Open, no current flow, voltage pressure is felt across the collector emitter. Closed, because you've turned the transistor on, current flows, but there is no voltage pressure across here because effectively this point is grounded. Let's take it to the next step. So we talked about the digital use of the bipolar junction transistors, a switch, high, low, true, false, on, off, conducting, not conducting, great for digital circuits. What about analog circuits? We have a small signal coming in and you need to amplify it either from a microphone or a cell phone, GPS signals, uh, sensors, pH sensors, thermocouples, very low level voltages that need to be amplified to be use, used in a productive manner. So what we can do is, let's have a quick look at our DC bias circuit again. Now, we set up in the previous videos our bias point, which is turning this on halfway so that we have room to either turn it more on or less on, towards the off or towards the fully on. So we set up our bias resistors. This is the emitter resistor. This is the collector resistor. We have a gain function of some number. Let's just leave it like that. The the relationship, the relationship in this bias was that when we have a current going into the base, we had a multiplied current coming through the transistor from VCC source down through, and we had a formula. We know that we use this relationship. We're taking some liberty here because in truth it's slightly different. It's actually IC is equal to beta IB, but IC in our case is approximately equal to IE. 
So we'll use uh, the function as uh, beta times the base current equals the emitter current. Now, notice that I'm using capital letters as subscripts to my current, for example. And that is to reflect the fact that we're talking about a direct current. Direct current flows in one direction. So if that is the case, let's look at what we've set up here. Because at this point here in the base, this is voltage, we have some value of voltage coming in, setting up here. That value, as you know, is R2 over R1 plus R2 times VCC. That is a situation right there. And over here, we have a similar situation if we take our signal out this way and look at this point here. Again, we will have a voltage. And just ignore the fact that it's inverted, because when this is on, this is negative, or pulled down to ground, sorry. And when this is off, this is up. But regardless, we have a voltage up here much higher, much higher. So this will be V at the emitter, so at the uh, collector. And this is V at the base, OK? And the collector voltage will equal, so if you take the voltage at the supply up here of the collector, and we have this current flowing down, again, a direct current, and we have this resistor, Ohm's law, that will equal the voltage at this collector point here. Now. That's fine, that's set up, that's DC, but the signal that we need to bring in and therefore amplify is going to be an alternating current signal. Alternating current signals, first of all, are denoted by small letters. So we would have a small base current, for example. We will have a small lettered collector current denoting the alternating current. And again, the same thing for the emitter current, AC. Okay, so let's look at that. We're going to bring in a signal that looks something like this from the AC side. It's going to be, let's just do this one for now. So it's going to go positive some and it's going to go negative. Now this is an AC signal. This is an alternating current signal, which means that we're pushing you a charge and then we're pulling it back from you. It's as if I had a battery connected this way and then I switch the battery around and you see the signal that way, all right? So push, pull, push, pull. And as you notice, it is swinging around a reference point, in this case here, zero. So looking at this circuit, what we're trying to do is bring this alternating current signal in to this particular transform transistor and then amplify it out. So connecting this signal to this device, which already has a bias set up here, without affecting this bias point, I need to couple it. And I'm going to couple it in with what is called a capacitor. Now, this is a symbol for a capacitor. Capacitor is a physical device like a wall. Nobody's coming through that wall, but you know people are on the other side. And the more noise they make, the more you will be able to hear it through the wall. DC, DC is steady. DC has what is called a frequency that is equal to zero, OK? AC is a changing signal. AC has some frequency greater than zero. The pushback, the impedance that a capacitor gives us, has a formula. It's like this. This is the pushback from a capacitor, 2 pi frequency times capacitance. So. For a frequency of zero, zero into this number is a very, very large number. However, with a much higher number here, we can bring the impedance of that capacitor down. So with a suitable frequency and a suitable size capacitor, we can make this almost a short circuit for our AC signal. Again, recalling that across our switch, when it is shorted like that, you have no voltage. So we can short out, we can short out a signal, 
specifically an AC signal, because capacitors need a changing signal in order to be effective. You need a frequency. We can short out the, an AC signal with a capacitor and block and block and only pass the AC and block the DC signal. So what we're ending up with coming in here is an AC signal that rides on top of a DC signal. All right. And the expectation now is with amplification is to get this result. When I turn this transistor on, I'm pulling this point down to ground. And when I turn this transistor off, I'm raising this point up to the rail. So as you can see, turning the transistor off will bring the signal down. Turning the transistor, uh, sorry, turning the transistor on brings the signal down. Turning the transistor off uh, allows this uh, point to, to rise up. This is the result we're trying to get. So the aim of the amplifier is to increase the voltage level from the input signal to the output signal. What we noted in our DC analysis of our transistor is we used a model that looked like, in this case here we have an NPN material transistor, we used a model that looked like two diodes back to back. And that being the case, we understood that at this point here we had a 0.7 volt drop in analyzing. What we did was, of course, as you recall, we went around a closed loop analyzing our base voltages, our drop, and our emitter voltages in order to complete the, uh, the formula. For an AC model, we don't use this. We don't need this. We don't need this particular diode setup because the 0.7 has been established already. We're riding on top of it. We don't care about a 0.7 volt drop. And that being the case, what we do is we use a slightly different model for our AC side. We use something that looks like this. Again, we have a multiplier to the base current that comes into this transistor. And we have another very small resistance. We label this small resistance RE subprime. If you recall from um, your days maybe when you experimented with a diode, when we had a diode, we had a curve that looked something like this. And this is your 0.7 point here. This is a voltage. This is current. And there is this delta in voltage over current equal to the resistance of the diode. Bulk semiconductor material has resistance. Now, we have resistance in the collector, the base, the emitter. We have what we're called R parameters, but the one that really is of any note is this emitter resistance. This is the entire transistor. This is outside. This is outside. Okay. This is where we're going to bring our base. So that being the case, when we're looking at this uh, particular device, what we want to analyze is the gain, for example. What are we putting in and what are we getting out? Now, in a transistor circuit, or just like putting money in the bank, you put something in, you expect to get something out that is more than what you put in. So let's just put this one together here real quick. What's going to happen is we're going to put in a small base current, small b, and we expect to get this collector current, small c, times this collector resistor, giving us a larger voltage, OK? And the voltage that's put in is actually the voltage that's developed at the base here. And when we look at that, because this is in the emitter circuit, the voltage that will be developed will be I small e times R e prime. That will be the voltage developed across these two points, which will be the voltage that we'll see at the base. So let's look at this. You're going to put a voltage in, and you're going to get a voltage out. That will become our gain. The voltage that we put in is, in this case here, I e r e prime, and the voltage out, I small c r c. Question is, what is this r e prime Wheeler's talking about? Well, really, it's, it's a generation of electrons thermally inside the device. And for our purposes, we're going to use a formula 
it's 25 millivolts, very small, divided by the emitter current that was set up from your DC analysis, that current there. That is a value you typically see if you measure, measure it or even do the calculations, somewhere around 10 to 20 ohms. Okay? But that's fine. That's where the voltage is going to be built up on the base. But let's see what happens when we combine these two. If we have gain, which is used as an A symbol, particularly, let's say, the voltage gain of this device. If we look at the voltage gain, what we've got is the output. So that's I, C, R, C, right? Over the input voltage, input voltage, I, E, R, E prime. Again, the emitter current that is formed by the uh, amplification of beta through this uh, particular circuit. If we look at that and we say, for example, that we, our assumption is our collector uh, current is approximately equal to our emitter current, again, this current created by our alternating current signal, then what we've got is this will cancel out and we will have RC over RE prime. So, for our first configuration, this configuration of transistor, which is also called a common emitter transistor configuration, because if we look at this, the emitter is common to the input signal and the output signal. So for a common emitter configuration, the voltage gain is equal to the collector resistance, AC collector resistance, over RE prime in this configuration. 